The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. I dream of a day when any American can launch into space and see the magnificence and grandeur of our home planet Earth, as I have been blessed to do. Charles F. Bolden, Jr. was born on August 19, 1946, in Columbia, South Carolina. Even at an early age, Charlie was looking to go out and explore. My most vivid memory of growing up in South Carolina is, is all the exciting things I did with my cousin Herbert Bino and my brother Warren. Uh, we used to spend a lot of time on Broad River and, uh, you know, doing daring things, crossing the river and in, in and out of the water and all that. So I, I think I remember those more than anything else of, of my childhood memories. After graduating from C.A. Johnson High School in 1964 and the United States Naval Academy in 1968, Charlie Bolden entered the Marine Corps and flew more than 100 missions during the Vietnam War in the A-6A Intruder. He went on to earn a Master of Science degree from the University of Southern California and then graduated from the United States Naval Test Pilot School in Maryland where he had a chance meeting with fellow South Carolinian and astronaut Ron McNair. Ron came in with a group of the other first group of space shuttle astronauts. They flew up for a reunion, test pilot school reunion, came in in their sleek looking T-38s and, and that was the first time I met Ron and we started talking and I learned he was from a place called Lake City. I had never heard of Lake City and you know we started talking about it and found I was 42 miles away from Columbia. Uh, we had a lot of things in common. His mother had been a teacher we had both grown up in the segregated South. And he asked me if I was gonna apply for the space program. I told him, not on your life. And he said, why not? And I said, they'd never select me. And he looked at me and he said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He said, how do you know if you don't even apply? And so he kind of goaded me into putting my application in for the space program. And I subsequently uh, was nominated by the Marine Corps, went down to Houston for a week of interviews and evaluation and got selected in the second group of space shuttle astronauts. So that's how it's because of Ron McNair that I applied for the space program and then uh, subsequently got, uh, got selected to be, become an astronaut. Charlie Bolden came in 1980 to JSC. He was the second class of astronauts that uh, came for the shuttle program. Unlike Ron McNair though, he was a pilot. So when he came in, he, was, he knew he was going to be piloting the space shuttle and at some point commanding um, some missions. Charles Bolden flew four historic space shuttle missions from 1986 to 1994. His first mission was STS-61C, where he was the pilot of the space shuttle Columbia. Any flight on the shuttle is spectacular and uh, sort of like a dream come true. The first flight's really special because you have no idea what to expect other than what your experienced crew members tell you. It was special being on Columbia, being from Columbia, South Carolina. And, and, and it, uh, for a number of years after that flight, you know, every time I would come home, it was a big deal. Uh, so, but it was special to have an opportunity to fly on a shuttle that was, had the same name as, my, as the place of my birth. Charlie piloted the Discovery in 1990, which deployed the Hubble Space Telescope. I see you coming up. His third mission was commander on the space shuttle Atlantis, with the first space lab mission dedicated to improve our understanding of our climate and atmosphere. His final mission was commanding the Discovery again on the historic first joint American-Russian shuttle mission in 1994. <laughs> People always ask of the four flights, which ones stand out? I flew twice on Discovery, once on Columbia, once on Atlantis. Every flight was distinctly different in the purpose of the mission. I don't have any single flight that I consider to be the best. I have to tell people though, your first is always really impressive. Um, Hubble goes without saying was 
mind-boggling, especially in light of what Hubble has done for the understanding of our universe. Um, you know, Atlas, my third mission, stands uh, on its own uh, as sort of an early precursor to helping us understand our climate and what's going on here on this planet. And then um, I knew that STS-60 was going to be my last flight because my family and I had talked about it and so we had decided that that would be my last flight. So it was a particularly tough mission to get ready for because every evolution we went through I knew would be my last. Um, that was kind of made it emotional. President Obama nominated Charles Bolden as NASA Chief Administrator, and after Senate confirmation, he became the first African American to head NASA on a permanent basis. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A launch is incredible. I, I, everybody, I, I just wish everybody in, in, in the world, but particularly every American, could see the fruits of their tax dollars that goes to NASA. Um, I wish they could see the result, of the, you know, and the power and, and just the overwhelming power uh, and, and emotional experience of a shuttle launch. Not a week goes by, almost not a day, that there's not some new scientific discovery uh, that comes about based on a NASA project or program or initiative. It's an incredible place to work and, and it's probably the best job in the world being the NASA administrator. Um, I have a little bit more than 17,000 civil servants and about 40,000 contractors that we call our NASA family. Um, could not be prouder of their achievements and everything. It makes me wake up every morning rushing out to go to work because I'm excited about what we do because we make a difference. We do, we do very difficult stuff, very difficult and challenging things, things that are risky because everybody else can't do them and we do them very well. You know, his legacy is, is, is his involvement in the first stages of the Shuttle Mir program. And I, th I think when you look at a lot of things that, uh, that Charlie talks about, even as an astronaut and now as administrator, I, th I, I think, you know, he's continued um, along these same lines. He's formed partnerships with other nations. Um, he knows that we're not going to get beyond Earth orbit any longer by ourselves. It's just too expensive. Um, and I think that he sees the value of commercial space flight. I think, you know, maybe in 15, 20 years when we look back, his push and his efforts for commercial space flight uh, may pay off. That may be his true legacy when we look back uh, on that time. Uh, I hope people will be able to look back and say, you know, he was the administrator at a time of great challenge and uh, he was successful in convincing us that we needed to stay the course in exploration and, uh, and investment in the future in, in technology development and innovation and education uh, that for my home state of South Carolina is a message I'd like to get to people. Uh, we cannot give up on education, uh, you know, it, it's always an easy target. Nothing that I have done in my entire life since leaving C.A. Johnson um, I would have ever imagined. And, and that's why I tell kids all the time, you know, they say, what should I take if I want to be an astronaut? I, and I tell them, forget about being an astronaut. Study as much as they can now. Try to make sure that they get a good sound uh, basis in math and science because no matter what they're going to do, it'll serve them well. I, I tell them the most important thing is to, be, is to get into something about which you can be passionate. Uh, because then they'll be good and they'll be successful. And, you know, I, I never dreamed I'd be doing anything that I've done. But, but everything I've done, every step along the way, I've been very passionate about it. And it's allowed me to be with people, to be influenced by people, but also to influence other people and try to make their lives better. Mm -hmm.